Good morning, gentlemen. Um, if you could start out by telling us where you've come from today and uh, which school that you're part of. Um, we've come from Shrewsbury, which is in Shropshire, just by the Welsh border, and we're from the sixth form in Shrewsbury School, okay. which is in Shrewsbury. And do you want to just take a minute to introduce yourselves? Um, Hi, I'm uh, Tom Burgess. I live in Shrewsbury as well, going to school there. Yeah, Josh Richards, uh, I also live in Shrewsbury, uh, and yeah. And um, I'm Charlie Jones, I live slightly over the border in Wales, but I go to the Shrewsbury School as well. Excellent. Well, I have to congratulate you as the winners of the Space Experiment Competition. I wonder if you could take a moment just to explain a little bit about that competition, um, and then perhaps go into an explanation of the experiment that you proposed. Yeah, well, the... Um the experiment was started about um, oh, just over a year ago now by uh, BNSC and SSTL. It's kind of a venture to get more school children involved in the space industry. And um, the initial stage of the competition was you had to submit a five-page uh, submission uh, about uh, an experiment which will be launched into space on a satellite. Uh, it had to conform to certain parameters. For example, it had to fit in a 10 by 10 by 10 centimetre cube. It had to uh, transmit less than 10 megabits of data on average a day, use less than one watt of power. And, and be it, under a kilogram as well. Oh yeah, under a kilogram, and cost less than £100,000 to build. Which is, as you can imagine, is pretty difficult for a, uh, for a space experiment. So, uh, and uh, what, what did you actually win as a result of, of this competition? Well, effectively we won the sort of £100,000 and we get to work with um, SSTL and BNSC and we go down to SSTL and we, we sort of help them plan the experiment and it should be launching on UK DMC2 in June of this year. It was, it was so. supposed to be the launch was supposed to be a bit later, like a few years time, but it's now, it's been moved forward to June because essentially we're just uh, uploading a code which is actually quite... Yeah, well, that's quite no additional rather, hardware. Relatively simple. So. Hmm. Yeah, and actually I think that would be interesting if you could explain just a little bit about what's actually involved in, in taking your idea to the reality of being something that, that was part of the DMC2. Well, um, after the uh, five-page submission which we submitted, uh, submitted last year, we had to uh, write a more, much more detailed report, like, uh, quite a, a few dozen pages. Mm, just 20 or so. Yeah. yeah, we had to give a detailed data budget and uh, what, how we were going to analyse the data how we are going to collect the data, why does this effect um, actually occur. And um, when, when we submitted that uh, and we were announced as the winners, uh, we went down to SSTL, uh, thrashed out our idea with the engineers down there, tried to see how it would work. And we also worked in uh, collaboration with Bath University, who are specialists in this field. And uh, they like advised us and the engineers at SSTL how we were going to do this. Yeah, Bath do um, a lot of ground-based GPS observations. Um, so what we're going to do is combine our data for these sort of horizontal, uh, we call them line integrals, through the because what we're acti actually doing is um, taking GPS signals from GPS satellites, and their signals pass through the ionosphere, and they mm -hmm. they will. We receive, we receive the signals and yeah. like, they kind of show scintillation events um, and we get kind of the data of the scintillation events and then yeah. we can then map uh, where the scintillation events are and kind of the total electron content of the uh, atmosphere. Yeah. Well scintillation, just a quick overview, is essentially um, how um, electromagnetic radiation is affected by our ionosphere. So essentially the different densities of uh, ions in the ionosphere um, will cause the um, electromagnetic waves, so for example, radio, uh, radio waves, um, to in, like, increase in amplitude, decrease in amplitude, change in phase, and this can change lots of like, it can lead, lead to lock off, like loss of lock for your GPS signals, and it's like quite a big problem, uh, especially um, in near equatorial regions, yeah. where the effect is greatest. We, uh, we saw a film, it was an Equinox film, uh, about the 1991 Gulf War, and it had this sort of lieutenant colonel, you can imagine the sort of thing. <laughs> and um, he was saying how they relied on GPS a lot, but in the morning and in the evening, sort of dusk and dawn, um, they'd get a reading out on the GPS called GPS bad, <laughs> which um, means they've lost lock effectively because of the scintillation in the morning and the evening. 
They didn't really understand what it was back then, but uh, we're hoping now to study it and uh, hopefully lead to uh, improvement to that, that happens more kind of near the equator. There's what's known as sweet spots in the ionosphere, which are, have a much higher electron content, uh, which is just above and just below the equator. Um, so that's why it affected them um, and then what they were doing. And it doesn't really affect us that much um, because we're quite high latitude. So. So, so in the short term, is it the case that it's more about knowing when to expect issues um, or is this really expected to allow uh, compensation to be built into systems uh, to, to uh, I guess, account for that scintillation? Well, I suppose we're planning on combining our horizontal line integrals with um, ground-based observations from the University of Bath and they've got a software called MIDAS which uses tomography to map exactly where the scintillation um, occurs. So effectively what we hope to produce is a sort of weather service for the ionosphere. <laughs> I guess you could see that in the future. And seeing as our experiment is literally just code for, um, so you don't have to put any hardware on, an, uh, on a satellite, um, we can just, we could, you could think about it as this way, upload it to every satellite that has a GPS receiver on which they will do. And um, you could have hundreds of these little weather satellites, if you put it that way, um, going about. So essentially, yeah, we're finding first where this <coughs> effects happen and then hopefully someday we might be able to look at how to reduce them, but we, that's not really what we're looking at right now. Yeah. Um, and what's it been like to work with SSTL? Well, it's been, it's been really good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. They're like leaders in their field, best like micro satellite yeah. company in the world, I think it is. Yeah, they're, uh, they're leading producers, independent yeah. producers. And uh, we're producers. working closely with uh, Stuart uh, engineer Stuart Duncan there, who's really helped our experiment along. He's, re he's, he's really, he's really helpful. He's really enthusiastic about it as well, yeah. which is good. Um, the the SST SSTL guys really, um, really liked it actually, the idea, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's promising. Excellent. You're obviously enjoying yourself, but um, what does it really mean to you to get this kind of opportunity? Well, I think that because don't know anyone, no student our age really gets the chance to launch something into space, so it's quite a cool thing to be able to do. And it is a, an amazing opportunity. I mean, mm. Yeah, well, just had my uh, university interviews, and I think that really helped me get in a spot. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's definitely a, to a talking point for quite a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> so. And what about your friends at school? What do they think about all of this? Um, I think they, they think it's pretty cool and they're probably a bit jealous as well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure some of them aren't. But. <laughs> <laughs> right, on. Okay. Um, well, congratulations on, on this accomplishment. Uh, I hope that uh, as, as we go through the next few months, you'll keep us posted on the progress and uh, we can talk to you again and get some updates. So, so thanks very much, gentlemen. Oh, we do. Right, and, uh, thank enjoy you the rest much. of the conference. Cheers. You too. Thanks. Thanks.